45 is our time. Uh, joining us on the program, mother of William. Uh, he is at the Niagara Children's Center all this month. It is our Help Kids Shine campaign in support of the Niagara Children's Center. And if you want to go to the website, helpkidsshine.ca, you can make a one-time donation. You can become a monthly donor, or you can sign your team of four up for the plasma car races, which is coming up May 31st at the Gale Center. Elizabeth and William, how are you today? Oh, looking forward to the long weekend, I imagine. Oh, you know what? We counting the moments, but every day is a holiday when you have a kid like William. So, All right. Elizabeth, tell me about William. Well, William is one of those amazing kids that you never know what to expect. Um, our crazy journey uh, started with a traumatic birth where neither one of us were supposed to make it. So we're one of those Hollywood movie stories that you never expect to happen in real life kind of thing. Um, and that changed all those plans of, you know, all the birth plans and everything you expect to happen went completely out the window. And we became a Matt kid because everything happened to William at that moment that caused a lot of brain damage and ended up giving him more labels than our pantry. Um, he wasn't supposed to make it very long. And now we are four years old and doing oh, wow. things that we were never supposed to do. Uh, we're considered deaf, blind, and nonverbal. And he's found his own way to communicate. He's found his own way. He's a spastic quadriplegic and he's found his own way to roll over. And we just got the exciting news today that he has just got accepted into the Niagara Children's Center School for the next year. So we're actually talking schooling. Oh, how exciting world. is that? I just had on a parent last week yes. who was looking forward. And I don't they're going to be going to school with us, too. Oh, that's great. And yes. that was Joanna. Oh, Joanna. That's... Yeah, Joanna is uh, one of William's girlfriends. Oh, and, nice. And uh, it's good. Yeah, you know what? That's the amazing thing about the Children's Center is the connections that we get um, and things that just change our world. There's people that are their worlds have already been changed. And so the parent connections have been incredible. And so we're actually already close friends with several of our future classmates, which is unbelievable. Yeah, that re that, yeah. Is, that is some sort of connection. And it's yeah. interesting. Um, I, I imagine, and as you described it, from birth, it has been for, for your family a bit, a bit, if I can understate it, <laughs> a bit of a challenge, right? And yeah. so when did William first go to the center uh, I, you know, because kids, mm -hmm. you, you, you never know what age it could be. Six months could be 18 months yeah. could be, you know, six years, 12 years, whatever. Uh, but William, you knew from the beginning, there were going to be some, some difficulties. What, what age did he first go to the center? Um, so William, we were very lucky. He has a, a tracheostomy. Um, but because he did need a ventilator, we only spent the first six and a half months of his life in the hospital. Okay. Um, granted for the next year and a half, we spent every month we went back so we were frequent flyers for the first two years of his life we you know it was but we lost count at like 300 and something days um but the children's center got involved with us very early on uh so it was right at six months that we started seeing the physical therapist and they were really incredible at supporting us because especially with a tracheostomy even going in the vehicle is difficult um because when someone has a trach you have to have somebody that can suction them in the car in the seat beside them so I can't drive alone with him. I need somebody to be with me to be able to go down the street. Um, so there's no such thing as running out to the store to get milk anymore. Um, so the Children's Center has been incredible at helping us coordinate appointments and getting us there and getting us to the center and, and coming out if we need them at the house. Um, and so very early on, he has been having assistance from the incredible team of, of workers there. Okay, so let me back you up a second, Elizabeth. Go over a tracheostomy and, yes. and what that does and then why you, right? Because for most, the child is in the back seat, strapped in, all right? Uh, but the tracheostomy provides, as you said, you, you need someone there yes. to help uh, suction? Yes. Okay. So if you think of how we swallow... Right. Um, William doesn't have that ability very well. So he has this, uh, he actually has a different feeding tube than most. He has a straight surgical J tube. Um, so he gets all his feeding and everything through his, his intestines. Um, but he has trouble swallowing. And so all of those things that you normally just swallow without thinking, right. he doesn't. And so it ends up his tracheostomy allows him to breathe. So he's got a hole right in his throat, uh, which actually is a blessing. It's made it so that we can um, stop aspiration pneumonia. We can get in there and clean out when we need to. 
but it means you need to be able to respond right away. Okay. Um, and so somebody needs to be able there to clean that airway out for him rapidly. So he needs somebody within arm's reach 24 seven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tell me about his brother, Adam. <laughs> yes. So our, our connection to the children's center goes way back. Actually, my husband was actually a client at the children's center when he was a kid Okay. Uh, for speech therapy and our 10 year old daughter did too. And then Adam is his big brother who was actually um, formerly my, my parents' foster child. And he actually had a brain tumor that he was born with. It was entwined, entwined in his optic nerve. And so he actually is intellectually and developmentally disabled as well and blind. And so he received uh, help at the center right from the beginning as well. And then he came to me when I was pregnant with my daughter and said he was done being my little brother and wanted to be the big brother. Nice. And so, yes. And so actually it's kind of ironic that most of the team that William has had at the Children's Center actually was the team for Adam 20 years ago. So even though it feels like it's our first day on the rodeo every single day, it's not. We've been doing this for a while. Well, I sympathize with Adam only mm -hmm. because I am three times a little brother. So I'm the baby mm -hmm. of the family and I so, never got to be a big brother. So if you have the choice, yeah. you know. Right, right. <laughs> And if you can confuse everybody by calling everybody your mom, then, hey, why not spice life up a little? There you go. Right? E excellent. It's excellent. Boring. <laughs> All right. So school next year for William. That's exciting. That's yeah. uh, and, and uh, uh, after that, wh what is wh what are your hopes for William? So the honest, hard truth is that William is considered palliative. Um, so we do have a team that is with him. Um, his life expectancy because of this disease. Uh, well, because of the all of the conditions, we don't have uh, any knowledge of what his life expectancy is. Uh, so we were never supposed to make it to a, a you know a day. Well, and you know, and he he um, he fought very hard to come back to live, and so we didn't expect a week, we didn't expect a year. So to get to four years is unbelievable. So long term plans. Um, I very quickly learned that you can have your hopes and dreams, but don't put them in pen. You got to put them in pencil so you can erase them and change them as you go. Um, but the reason why we're super thrilled about the Children's Center School is because William is doing things right now we never thought he would. Um, so with the help of his therapist, he's now learning to use a walker, which is something we never even dreamed of. And now he's taking some steps on his own and he's learning to do signs. He lets us know when he needs a suction and he they've done such incredible things and having him at the children's center to start his schooling is going to give him the ultimate space to be able to learn all of the things he needs to do to have any future he wants. Um, and so that's what we, it's just the setting him up for the future. One of the things that has been amazing. Um, and, and, and it sounds like you even predate my involvement with the children's center only because we've been doing this 19 years. So I've been, yeah. I've been talking to therapists and parents for, for 19 years and when it first started, the communications boards yep. were big. They took yep. up a lot of power and they were simple. And, but it allowed, right, ch yep. children to have a, a have a bit of a voice. And it was like, you, you know, it, it's amazing yep. that you know, we developed a system otherwise yeah. that how they could communicate. And it yep. sounds like though William has his system for communicating that he that that does he let you know exactly what he's thinking or what he needs or how he's feeling? Um, he is a really tough read. Um, okay. if, if I could get um, the dictionary of William or if somebody could find me the book of translations for him, I'd be eternally grateful. He could be very difficult to read. Um, but that's one of the reasons why we're really excited. We're on the referral team to the cast team, the communicative team right. at the center, uh, because with new technology, like you said, with Adam, it was, you know, a printed out picture and, and we were looking at paper and, and now he's playing around with an iPad and yeah. he's looking at potential eye gaze material and, and, and opportunities like that. So he, William is really good at letting us know when he doesn't want to do something or when he's really happy. Um, but he's usually just a chill kid. He's kind of the opposite of mom. So mom is bouncy going, always busy. <laughs> and he's like dad. He's the chill cucumber who goes with the flow and basically will just let us know if he doesn't want to do something, um, which is pretty cool too. Elizabeth, before I let you go, enjoy mm -hmm. the uh, first long weekend of the summer. Let me yeah. ask you, uh, you were familiar with the center. Obviously mm -hmm. your husband was familiar with the center. 
But what would life be like with your family uh, if the center wasn't here in Niagara? If it, if it meant a journey to, you know, Hamilton or Mississauga or Kitchener Waterloo or or this was stuff you had to download and do at home on your own. Mm -hmm. What is the impact of the center meant to you and your family? It's so lonely without. And I can say that from experience, from going back 20 years ago when it was all just starting and how so much of the center is family engagement focused now and bringing us together and allowing us to make those opportunities. I, I don't know what I would do without my Niagara Center piece, like the other parents and the other community, because as much as you have family members and you have people in your village, it, there's so much more to that. And until you're actually in the trenches, you know, going through these different things, it's really hard to understand. And when you can just sit back and not have to explain it and somebody else feels the exact same way, like school, we're incredibly excited and we're completely terrified on a whole nother level than I was with my daughter because I've been his voice for four years, but sending him to the children's center, I know that I'm sending them to a place that they understand different ways to get him to speak in his way. And that is such a comfort and it's something we're so grateful for. It has been great meeting you and William. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, if you want to help families like the Chambers, uh, there's a great way to do it. Helpkidsshine.ca. Helpkidsshine.ca. You can make a one-time donation. You can provide uh, stable and secure funding for the Niagara Children's Center so people can get off waiting lists, so the right therapy can be applied, so equipment can be purchased. You can become a monthly donor. Just 19 bucks a month really is a huge help. Helpkidsshine.ca. Elizabeth and William, awesome meeting you. Great conversation. Uh, and let's chat again next year. Thank you so much. It's truly grateful. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> Bye, William. Thank you. Have Bye. a great weekend, my man. <laughs> Take All care. right. 447 is our time.